today we're going to be taking a look at creating a new opportunity in Infor CRM. Now I'm running version 8.3 here, so if you're running a slightly different version, that may be why you're seeing some changes, slight changes along the way here. Before I go in and create a new opportunity, I wanted to go in and show you some defaults that we can set up on our opportunities. So going to the Tools menu and going to Options here, we can look at the opportunity defaults where it allows us to set up different defaults per user. So each user would have to set their defaults up here. First of all, it says, do you want to use the default naming conventions? Now that naming convention is going to use the opportunity account name and put a phase number next to it, depending on how many other opportunities you have already created for this account. You can still change that when you create a new opportunity. It would just use that default naming convention. Now, it says that it, it says as defined by administrator. It's not really by administrator. It is programming. So if you did want a different naming convention, um, we could do that via programming. Otherwise, you could just choose not to use the naming convention and just hand type in your description of your opportunity. They also have the opportunity status here and opportunity type, so you could choose a default status and type, a default probability when you start your opportunity, and a default currency here. In the upper right-hand corner, we can set up the closing date. So here it says, use the, oops, use the estimated closing date. Set the estimated close date to two months after opening and then choose the last day of the month. So right now it will go out two months and then set it at the last day of the month. And of course you can adjust that whatever way you want to there. Sales process, you can also choose a default sales process if you are using sales processes. Sales process is a series of steps that you can create to manually walk through um, your sales cycle. So if you have different things you need to do within your sales cycle that you want to be reminded of, not necessarily reminded of, but know of by looking at the sales process, what's the next step you need to do, you could set up a sales process to do that. Otherwise, you just set that to none. And then for the default contacts, you can choose to add all the contacts associated with the account you add on the opportunity, or you can choose only the a primary contact, or add no contacts at all, and you could just manually add them as you're adding your new opportunity. So I've got mine set there as the primary contact. I'm going to set a default sales process here also so you can see that. And then I'll set a type over here as new. And I'll set the probability at 10%. And I'm going to go ahead and save those. And then we can go and look at creating a new opportunity. So once the defaults are set, and remember those defaults are per person, so each user would have to set up their own defaults. Now I'm going to go to the account screen here because that's more than likely where we'd start out. Either you have the account or the contact. So if I bring up Abbott Worldwide here in my training database, and I'm sitting on that screen there, I can either right click on the nav bar for opportunities and say new opportunity, or I can go up to the new menu at the top of the screen and choose new opportunity. When I do that, it's going to bring me to the Insert Opportunity screen. It's using all my defaults that I set up, the default naming convention where I put Abbott Worldwide with a Phase 2 on it. It already attached it to the Abbott Worldwide account record because I was on that record when I started. The account manager, um, it put me in, or I'm sorry, not me in, it put in the account manager for Abbott Worldwide. We could also choose a reseller here if we are using resellers. That's just hooked back to accounts so we could search our accounts for a specific reseller. Uh, estimated close. So you see here it went out two months. We're in November right now. What is it, November 14th? So it went out December, January, two months, and then it set it to the last day of the month, which is the 31st. In the upper right-hand corner, then, it default that status to open, the type to new. We still can choose a lead source here. 
We'd have to make sure we had our lead sources set up, of course. And then the close probability defaulted to 10%. Now we could go on here and set up our competitors, our products. It automatically added our primary contact under contacts. I don't usually do that on this page. I like to get my opportunity set in stone and then I can go back and add my competitors and products. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the save icon here, which is going to save this record, take me away from the insert opportunity screen, and take me to the opportunity detail view. So now it has set up my opportunity for me, has the snapshot in the upper right hand corner, no dollar amounts or anything in there yet because we did not put any products in yet. So now I can go down to the bottom of the screen, and I've got all these different tabs down here. One of them underneath more tabs is competitors. If I want to make a tab out of that, of course, I can just drag it up on my tabs and drop it there. So if I want to set up competitors I'm up against on this opportunity, I'll just click the plus sign over on the right side here. I can search my competitors. I can choose a competitor here and click on OK. When it does that, I see the Edit Opportunity Competitor screen where I have some strengths and strategy already set up in here. We can change, we could add notes in here for this specific opportunity, as well as we could check the box for incumbent if this was the incumbent for this uh, account at this opportunity. I'm just going to click on OK. So what that good, that's good for is later on if we want to run a report on what opportunities we've lost and what competitors we've lost them to, we would have that information. Now also we need to set up our products. So if I go to the products tab here, again click on the little plus sign over on the upper right hand side. Now we can go through and of course look up our products by family, status, SKU. Um, in here, using our contains or equal to, we can search our products. I've already got a list from here, so if I just choose Add Selected, you see it added it down at the bottom. Now I can highlight a different one, Add Selected, it adds that one also. So I can go through and continue to add products until I'm done, and at that point I would just click on Close. So I've added three, three products to my opportunity there. If I want to edit them, I can edit them. This is the Dell Optiplex. Uh, and we've got a base price there of $26.50. Now I can change the quantity, of course, there. Um, I can have different pricing levels in there that would be set up in my products. Or I can just change the adjusted base price here if I'm going to give them a discount. I got it set up at $2,500. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And you see here it adjusted my base price to $2,500. It figured out the discount for me. It's 5.6%. A quantity is two. My extended price is going to be $5,000 then. So I could do that for all my different products, um, set up the different adjusted price, the different quantities for each one. You see now up in the top here, it's adjusted my sales potential for the base and for the opportunity, the weighted value, the weighted value only $44. That's not very much because we have a close probability of 1% at this point. And that changed that because of my sales process. Remember, we had set it up as 10, but with the sales process, the sales process started out at 1%. So if I change that probability, let's say to 25% and save that, it also changes my weighted value up here in my snapshot of my opportunity. Now, so we've set up our products, our competitors, our snapshots all set up up on the top. If we look at that sales processes tab, this is where the sales process resides. So I chose a standard sales process out of the box, um, and it set that up for me. In here, we have different steps to go through the sales process. This is a whole other webinar on going through the sales process, but you would step through these different steps in the sales process. 
You can also use the hyperlinks to do the different actions like setting up an initial call or setting up a meeting. Any of these with asterisks on them are required activities, but this will allow you to step through the sales process and change the probability automatically based on the stage you're on within that opportunity. But really, for the most part, our opportunity is set up now. So our opportunities here, its status is open. When you finally get to the point of closing it at 100%, either you close win it or close lose it, um, and then you can set up reasons and set up an actual amount for you when you close that opportunity. But this is the opportunity you would work off of now until you do something with the opportunity, close win or close lose it. If I go back to my Abbott Worldwide here, I will be able to see underneath opportunities both the phase one and phase two, phase one that was added at some other point for $4 million a year, and ours that we opened worth $6,799. So in our contacts, I forget which contact it was, was it Jonathan Hardy? If I go to Jonathan Hardy's record, I'm not sure if this was the one on that opportunity or not, but we'll check here. If he is the one that was on that record or on that opportunity, that opportunity would also be listed under his opportunities tab on that contact detail view. So everything's linked in one way or the other. The opportunity is linked to the account, the opportunity is linked to contact, and vice versa. Waiting for Jonathan Hardy to come up here. There he is, and look underneath opportunities. And yes, it was him because he's got the Abbott Worldwide uh, number two, phase two here for the $6,799. So it was associated to him. So and of course, if we just go back to our opportunities down the left-hand side, we'd go back to the opportunity that was sitting there open, which is that same opportunity. We also could have went to the recently viewed to get back to that Abbott Worldwide Phase 2. So to create your new opportunity, you're either going to go to a contact or an account, use your new menu, or right-click on the nav bar to choose new opportunity, set up your new opportunity with the defaults you have set up in your tools and options, and then work that opportunity, moving it through the close probability till you get to 100% of either closing or winning that opportunity. Those closed and won opportunities or closed and lost opportunities will also stay on that account so you can use them for reference in the future. That's about it. Not a lot to it. Um, but hopefully you're creating lots of new opportunities in the future. I want to thank you for all, uh, all of you for joining me this afternoon, and have a great day.